Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I know everyone's joining in now, but we're going to start by just introducing uh, who's here on this call. My name is Kendra Ivins. I'm the Director of Residence Life. I'm Brian Lemire. I'm the Associate Vice President for Campus Life. And I'm Beth Wallace. I'm the Dean of Students here and Vice President for Campus Life and Student Development. Um, well, today we're going to go over some information about move-in day and then about first year orientation. Uh, so we have lots of information. If you have questions, feel free to add those to the chat. Um, Mary Carmen is going to be helping us manage those so we can get those answers to you as quickly as possible. Um, move-in day is just around the corner. Um, move-in day um, is move going to be down in four, four uh, uh, questions. questions. The, the first, first one you can start, start on now. now. Um, um, so, so right, right now, right now you're working, working on your check-in check card. card. If you, if you have, have not asked your check-in check card, card um, um, have, have some information some about how to do how to that, do that, that now, now uh, or, or inside, inside. that's going to be the most important, most important thing you can be working on right now to make sure that you are prepared and have the quickest check-in possible. The second thing is check-in. So um, you will come, the first stop when you all arrive on campus is going to be the Mungo Student Center. That's going to be where you check in um, receive a lot of information, receive your room key, and get started. Then you'll join your loading zone, uh, and then you get to move in. You'll sit back, and we'll, we will unload your items for you. So the first thing to focus on is that mobile check-in card. Uh, so if you if you have your phone on you, take a minute and, and pull up this QR code. This is going to take you right to wofford.edu forward slash check-in. That's going to tell you right now, live, what you have left to complete before you you join us on campus. If you have anything on that mobile check-in card that says that it is not complete, please make sure that you take the time over the next week to complete that before you get on campus. That makes check-in so much faster for you. Um, we will have some some departments on on site to help you um, complete some of these items before you get here. But make sure if you can get this done before you get here, it makes your your check-in so fast. Um, so if you have questions or if something is showing that you need to complete, um, these are the offices that you need to coordinate with. So if the business office and financial aid, um, if you have any fi outstanding financial ba balance, um, if you have not completed your medical form, we're going to talk about that in just a second. But that's the biggest one we have lingering is the most students are missing their medical form. Please, please make sure you do that ahead of time. Um, and then your photo ID and your per your parking permit. Make sure you fill that out so that you can have your ID ready for you when you get here. So the medical form. This is the one right now live that we have the most students um, missing. Your medical form, this is just a quick overview of what it looks like to complete that. Um, you'll access a pa patient portal. Um, you'll be able to go into immuniz immunizations in your student forms and you need to make sure all of that is updated. On the right, we have our required vaccines, and you will need proof of those vaccines. Um, so these are things, this is something that you need to be working on now if you have it already. Um, and Dean Wallace, do you have any insight to add um, for these? I do, thank you, Kendra. The medical form is critical if you are um, matriculating as a student, particularly as a residence life student, and most of our students are um, boarders here. This is information similar to what we would need because we will, in essence, be your healthcare provider while you're here on campus. And so we will, um, unfortunately, have to stop some people and have them go visit the wellness center before you can continue into the check-in process because this is how important it is. On the COVID-19 vaccine, we do get these questions and I want to assure you that we do have a waiver that is online, that if that's something you've utilized in the past couple of years for COVID-19, a waiver, that is available online and you are welcome to submit that. Otherwise, just the dates of the COVID-19 vaccine series. I can't reiterate enough how important this is. And I, we just hate to stop people on that important day to stop and find immunization records. You do not have to go to the doctor. Actually, it's just a self-reporting health form, but your immunization records may be the one thing that takes a little bit of time. So I will look forward to um, hopefully seeing that number decrease from our wellness center of how many medical forms are needed. Thank you, Kendra. Great, 
Great. So if there's anything that you take away from this is check your checking card and make sure you have your, your medical form in. Um, but that's all before you get here on campus. Let's say your check-in card is good and you are ready to join us, um, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. Um, check-in, what does that look like? Uh, so you will be checking in at that Mungo Student Center. Uh, that's the one with the terrier in front of it that many of you walked past on your admissions tours. Um, when you come into the Mungo Student Center, we will have stations set up. Uh, we will be checking that mobile check-in card um, and we, we, you will be able to pick up your student ID, your parking decal, advising information, uh, your room key, orientation materials, um, any unloading instructions and your unloading pass. That's a big one um, because you will not be able to join any line to unload until you get that. Uh, and then we also have some of the departments on, on site. So if you have something lingering on your, your uh, mobile check-in car that you just were not able to get done before you got here, we will have those, those departments on site to assist. Uh, again, that, that takes you out of line to, to get checked in. So it will make your check-in process a little bit longer, um, but we will have those resources there on site available. So that's gonna be the very, very first thing you do when you get on campus is come and check in and collect all of those that information. After you've gotten your room key, you've gotten your packet, um, you've gotten excited, you will join a one of the four unloading check-in lines. So um, these colors represented on screen, you will be one of those four colors. Um, this will be demonstrated. You will have a, a plaque for your car um, that you will be able to put in for your unloading zone. And you will also have an unloading map um, that tells you where to go. So depending on where you're living, you will be in one of these colors. Um, so once you pick up your key, you will follow. We have what, 60 signs, um, making sure that you get where you need to be. You will follow the signs directing your color um, to where you will need to go next. Uh, make sure that you follow those signs um, in order to access where you, you will go. Uh, Dean Wallace or Dean LeMaire, do you have any information to provide on those? I do wanna uh, mention, um, again, you, you'll hear us say this multiple times today, the, the biggest advice that we can continue to give you is just to do everything you can um, to get your checklist completed, mm -hmm. um, but also to go back to um, the Campus Life Bin, the Mungo Student Center, um, before you do anything else. And again, as Kendra has mentioned, all this has, has been looked at and, and so organized, and you'll have folks there that will help get you to the right place. I noticed there's a question in chat um, that I want to jump to just so I don't forget to answer it now. Um, for There are a few individuals that will be arriving early that are in different groups, for example, Bonners. Um, and for those groups, those instructions are, are a little different. Um, they should be coming from your organizational leader um, or director, and they'll let you know. But the process is a little bit different. I'd still suggest, if at all possible, to get everything done ahead of time from your express checkout. Um, but the actual check-in process is a little different. Um, and those leaders from those different organizations will share that information with you um, beforehand. That's a great point. And even if you are checking in early and arriving and moving in early because you were with one of these approved groups, you still need to come to check in that Saturday morning. That way you can pick up your, your packet that has all of the information that you'll need for orientation and um, parking passes and everything that you need. Make sure you still come Saturday morning during the regular check-in time, even if you are already in your room. So once you have your loading passed, you can get into a line. Uh, you, just as another reminder, you cannot get into an unloading line without a pass. If you try to enter, um, we will have uh, uh, some volunteers and campus safety officers um, helping direct traffic, and they will make sure that you turn around and you go over to the Mungo Student Center. So. Make sure you have a pass before you join any unloading line. And then the fun part, which is actually moving into your room. So you've gotten into your line, your correct color, um, and you've gotten all the way to the front. It, this is a very efficient, very quick process. Once you get into an unloading zone, you will pull up your car, um, open the door, and and volunteers will come move all of your things into your room. We ask that you stay in your car. That way, as soon as your room is, your your, your items are unloaded to your car, 
or to your room, you can go park your car and we can keep the line moving. Um, not everyone has to stay in the car. If just one person wants to stay in the car to move it, that's fine. But make sure we do not leave the car abandoned in order to go set up because then the rest of the line is waiting on you. Some big things to remember, make sure all of your items, everything that you're bringing is labeled because we will have a number of volunteers coming to move all of your things. And so making sure that there is, you know, piece of painter's tape with, with your room number and your name on it, um, make sure that it gets to the right place. Um, you want that, we want that. So help us out and make sure everything is labeled. Um, yeah, so once you, you are completely unloaded, you'll move your car to, to the nearest parking lot. Um, and then you get to go back and move into your room and everything will be there and you can get set up. So those are really the four steps that you need to remember. Um, one starting now and the, the other three will happen on move-in day. Hey, Kendra, if I have more than two cars or if I have two cars, will I get two passes for those cars? No, you need to make sure that they're they're with each other and they're both unloading um, and that way they can unload together. And yes, you will get two passes when you check in at the Mungo Student Center. If you have a third car, that is okay. We're not going to turn a car away. They'll just get in line behind the two with the passes and just get in line that way and we'll take care of all three that you have. Yeah. But make sure that the one with the pass or the two with the pass are in the front. That way um, we know that, that you all are cleared and you can say the next two cars are with me. We even give passes to the U-Haul trailers that... <laughs> Exactly. I would throw in a plug here just for residence life also. Um, I know that um, you've seen and you've been, you know, been reminded about the suggested things to bring and those things not to suggest or not to bring. Please just again, I would just suggest reviewing that before you come. Um, just last minute to make sure again you're you know, you get there and you start unloading such something such as extension cords. You're not going to be in trouble, but we're going to remind you to please take them back home with you because you can't have things like that. Um, so I just remember our suggest just to double check that um, before you come um, at those suggested lists because they can be very helpful. That's a great point. Um, and a lot of people ask what to use instead of uh, an extension cord. Um, you can use a surge protector. So as long as um, it has an automatic shutoff um, if there's if there if it overloads a, an outlet that, and has that surge protector feature. You can use that. Just no extension cords. Um, that's a that's a great point. We've got one more uh, chat. <laughs> um, we are bringing our our own fridge. I hate to ask you all to move that for us. I can answer that and say, I, um, I personally will not be moving that more than likely, um, but I can assure you there will be students there um, that will help move anything they need. Um, again, I, I just throw little things out from the past that will get asked last minute. Um, sometimes we've been asked about, and I think this is still on the website, about how long a futon or a small couch, how long they can be. I think the measurement in my memory is right, um, was 56 inches. As long as it's that, no longer than that, then it will fit through any stairwell um, on campus um, and you should be having no problem at all in, in your room. Um, again, all that information I'm pretty sure is on the, the website, but I mentioned that too, but far as micro fridges, yes, there will be students that will be gladly will help load those um, into the room. But one re helpful reminder and plug I'm going to put here is that we do not have this army of friends to move your things out. So just remember that everything that you bring in, you will be bringing out at the end of the year. So be thoughtful of that and deciding what you want to bring. Um, there's also a question, if they do not have a car, do you need to fill something out to omit the parking pass? Um, I'm not sure if there's any specific thing that they need to do. Do you all know? I, I will double check, but I am confident you still complete the form and just say you do not have a car um, and they'll document that. And that way they still make sure they've got your cell phone information and things like that for the uh, different alerts that we have on campus. I'll double check, but I'm pretty confident of that. So that's everything with our traditional student move-in, um, but we do have a Friday move-in opportunity that I do wanna share. Um, if you are local or you plan to be arriving early, uh, there is an opportunity to drop off your items early. 
Um, that's going to be on Friday, August 25th from 4 to 8. Uh, just please remember that th this is just an item drop off. So um, you can come at any point between those times. We will have staff in the lobby. They will meet you. They will walk with you to unlock a room. And then once you're done, they will go lock all of the rooms. So at 8 p.m. at night, uh, 8 p.m. that day, everything's going to be locked uh, and nobody's going to be distributed keys. So you still need to come back the next day. Um, but if you want to beat the rush and go ahead and have things in your room, you can do that. Just know we will not have staff to carry those items. So if that's going to be you all moving everything on your own. Um, but that is open and an option for anyone who's local or arriving early who wants to, to participate in that. I think we have another chat. Great question. Where do you, it's going to be at wafford.edu forward slash check-in. Um, but also if you have your, your phone, I'm just going to pull this back there real quick. Um, if you want to scan that QR code, that will straight, take you straight to your, your um, check-in card. I'll give that just another minute for anyone who needs to pull up the check-in card. Um, and then that's our information about move-in, um, unless there's anything else that Dean Walsh or Dean Lemire have information to add, and then we'll get into orientation. I will say the team in the Campus Life Student Development um, staff have worked for the last two or three months to make this a really smooth process, good communication. You should have received some emails um, from our department as well as Tom Henson's parents programs. So if you have any questions, feel free to email people on the staff or give us a call at our office number, especially if there's things that you think might hold your process up that day, because we want it to be a really fun day for you, for parents. I've taken three children to college. It can be very emotionally charged. And the last thing we want is to add frustration or emotions to what's go already going on. So we have a really fun day filled for our parents moving forward. And then several days after that for our students, if I, um, Kendra, do you want me to start with that? You want me to continue with orientation? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, there was a quick question. I'm gonna I'm gonna mention um, for the Friday. Um, okay. If they are if they are coming for if you are coming for a drop off on Friday, just come straight to your residence hall, um, and you will be able to drop off uh, your items there. We will have at the residence hall. We will have staff there. Um, you will still need to come check in for traditional student check in on Saturday morning to get your key um, ID and everything along those lines. But if you're coming on Friday, that will be where you go straight to your your um, assigned residence hall and meet staff in the lobby. If I could just mention one thing, Dean Wallace, before that, that Kendra just said it reminded me, um, and I, I just share this with everybody. The, the opportunity on Friday is a great opportunity for those who are close by, for those who are even long distance, who may be here, who want to unload some stuff or just see the room. Please, you were invited during that time. Please come. We welcome you. Please also just be patient with, with everything that's going on at, at that time. Facilities is still there. The RAs are still going through, getting things ready. Um, so please just be patient because it, it we're still trying to get ready for that official opening on Saturday morning. And so you will be able to park on campus drive during that time um, to unload some stuff if you would like. But then please, because again, we have no idea of knowing how many cars may come through. Please then just park your car in a parking lot as long as you're here um, that night. Um, so we can let, let as many people get as close as they can. Because again, the, the moving lanes and things like that will not actually open until Saturday morning. So I mentioned that just so we can be patient with each other on Friday night. I think that's a great point. And, and that, that good point of not leaving your cars or putting your carts in, in those unloading lanes because those are not open, um, just parking lots. So make sure you pull up to the nearest parking lot to unload um, so that we're not blocking other people from entrance. Okay. okay. Then the fun begins. First year orientation. Uh, again, the staff has worked tirelessly this past summer and into the spring. We selected 104 orientation staff to participate with you. These are upperclassmen who are excited to greet you, and there's a whole process of, of you getting to know them. 
these are just a few examples of what some fun things we're doing. The picture is of Camp Greystone, which is a beautiful camp about 45, 50 minutes from Wofford. We go up to Camp Greystone. We have for, this may be our 25th or 26th year. We have been doing this for years and it is a fun day. We charter 12 buses to go up for the day and we come back later that evening after a picnic steak dinner and other wonderful food prepared by the staff. It's um, just a really fun social time just for first year students and the orientation staff are up at the camp for a full day. You also see field day, a picture there, and I'm not sure if they were the winners last year, but field day is something you'll participate in with your FYI group that you will soon learn what that's about. There's 20 students in each of your group. And some of you on here may be thinking, I feel day, that's kind of like middle school. I say that every year to the orientation staff. Are you sure you want to do field day again? And it is probably the highest rated thing that we do during orientation. It lets off steam, you laugh, you are wet from water games. It is a fun time led by our orientation staff and students thoroughly enjoy it. So be ready for that. If you're not really competitive or athletic like me, there's plenty of other things to do that day as far as cheering your team on or the egg toss or something like that that doesn't require a whole lot of athleticism. Opening session is that last um, block there. Um, Dr. Sam Hatt will greet us along with other administrators welcoming our parents and students on the very first afternoon that you're here. That's at three o'clock after you have moved, well, we have moved you in, so you're not quite as sweaty as you could be, but refreshed, hopefully, to come and join us for the opening session that day. It is a short session, 30 minutes. We do it outside of main, our main building, which you may have remembered on your tour. We also do graduation four years later on that same spot, and so it's really meaningful as bookends to your time here at Wofford. After the opening session, students will go into uh, Leonard Auditorium right um, behind them to do what we think is one of very important, which is why it's the first thing that you do. It's about the honor code and judicial system and the student code of rights and responsibilities that we ask our students to abide by to be a part of our community. Parents will ask you and family members who are here to go down to the indoor arena and there will be several um, opportunities to hear about academics, um, student success, and other things that we offer as resources for our students. That's the first full day um, from the opening session. And after that, we end our day with a picnic here on our grounds for all, all people who are here, siblings, parents, students, our first year students, our orientation staff. We offer a picnic where we wind up the day and we ask parents to depart shortly thereafter because we want to move on with residence life and commuter information and a social event later that night. All of this information can be found on the FYI webpage. Um, the abbreviated schedule is where it's other information for parents. Also on our website on new student information, you'll find a lot of information on both of those. I said our team has been working very diligently this summer and they have created um, and has adopted a application software online platform called Presence. We're going to call it Terrier Hub, but we're going to use both of those right now because I think the App Store probably has Presence. And so we're going to call our individual Terrier Hub, but you would download the Presence app. This is something that you'll want to keep on your phone and handy throughout the year. This is where organizations and events that are happening on campus will be broadcast, marketed, your diff different organizations you will join will also use this um, app to tell you about different things. This is a new experience for us. And again, we are excited that everything that's going on on our campus, students can have access to that quickly and at your fingertips when you need to find information about where to be or events that are happening on campus. This is the QR code to view this new student orientation. We're going to ask that you download that right away. It's going to be in your packet um, when you check into the Mungo Student Center, just like Kendra um, mentioned, the first step when you do get on campus that day. We're going to ask you to download that because that's where orientation schedule, that's where we'll start. And so we'll get you to start using Terrier Hub 
really quickly when you come on campus. We're excited about um, this new software. We think it'll um, just get added communication for our campus and, and students will know what is going on and, and know all that we have to offer. We'll give you all this information, but if you want to get um, ahead of the game, this is how you do it. And so we, we're excited to offer that to you. Here's the parent schedule and you're welcome to you know, re review this, preview it on the Wofford website under new student information. Again, we have you here for um, a day. The other thing that's new this year we're excited about, the first year parents should have gotten a postcard from our parents program from Tom Henson. And they're offering a, after you depart campus, um, an opportunity to gather just socially, um, sponsored by a parents leadership council in downtown Spartanburg, just a few minutes away from campus. If you're able to do that, if your schedules allow, I think you'll enjoy meeting other first year parents. Um, it also is probably a place that a few tears will be shed. And so if you need some company in doing that, that would be the place to go. So, but this is a new thing. So we hope that this is something that'll be welcomed by parents to, for them to gather and enjoy getting to know each other as well. And that'll be downtown Spartanburg um, right after the picnic that we offer here on campus. Are there any questions we can answer on move-in day or orientation? That's a lot of information. All this can be found on our website. And of course, we're going to give it to you as well. We have, um, let's see, we start on Saturday and we finish up on Tuesday and classes begin on Wednesday. But we do have a full schedule of fun social events, a service opportunity. Again, I said field day. Uh, time that you will meet with your advisors before we go to Camp Greystone on Monday. So it is a, a schedule filled with the opportunities that you need to seamlessly you know, transition into Wofford as a first year student. All right, we don't have any questions in the chat. I just wanna give one more opportunity before we, we start to wrap things up or any final words from our presenters. I would just mention that thank you to, to Mary Carmen and admissions for, for hosting these all summer long. I think these are great informational conversations and um, just thank you for them for helping to keep us organized. Well, these will also be recorded. So if you feel like you jumped on the call a few minutes late or you want to go back and find where that check-in card is, uh, that will be in your FYI portal and you'll be able to link to any of the previous ones as well. Y'all have a heads up. Y'all are going to be ready to go and know exactly what to do. So we're excited that you joined us today and we will see you very, very soon here at Wofford.